there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes with us about what the future looks like for all these random alternate schedules. Um, so we're working, we're working out how to Uberize it. Um, so that'll be interesting. Yeah. It's an interesting journey for us technologically as well as ideologically. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, it, what you have to do to be able to randomly serve anyone, you know, you being a edgy Jedi Knight, you guys are, you've already altered time and space. Um, a little. <laughs> yeah. So now we're talking about what happens when you dissolve the whole group and put it into a structure where you still have all your normalized learning paths, not necessarily competency based, um, but kids can pace forward. Um, <clears throat> and then the intersections where there's teaching, mm -hmm. where it does have like a group, you set the auto cohort. <clears throat> so the teacher might pr present the same lecture two or three times a year. Mm -hmm. Um because different kids are pacing differently. Mm -hmm. And and then the attention saved by all the teacher ranks is used to catch up. They can look back at the students that are pacing slower. Mm -hmm. So it's an, it's an efficiency thing. So I'm gonna be looking for people like you, Heather, where you've got the mindset um, to sort of look at what we're doing and give us feedback. Sure. Yeah, you too, Dr. Moreno, if this sounds interesting to you. Well, it, it does. I mean, one of the things I think that it's just wrapping our mind around that this is the new reality. I, I was talking uh, earlier. Um, and, and, and that's what it is. I mean, this is no longer... And I was sharing that. I remember back in the day when I was uh, doing my uh, master's program in 2000, there was already distance learning in a different way. You know, you can say caveman style, yeah. uh, you know, but it's obviously grown by leaps and bounds. And this is this is a new normal. This is going to have to be something that we embrace. And it's, a, and it's just it's something we cannot say once we go back. You know, everybody gets a vaccine. Everybody's like, OK, we go. We discard that this you know, or use it limitedly. It's really going to have to be part of the culture of education permanently. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we're working on. Okay, good, so we're at the top of the hour. So welcome everyone to our conversation that we've already started here for the digital transition discussion for Northern California. So we're gonna be together now for, as long as you can last for four hours today and four hours tomorrow. There's a ton of material that the Learning Council has put out and we're gonna to try to squeeze it in here but between having some of our uh, illustrious educators that have been invited to share with you today. And we want everyone that's on the line to feel like you're part of the conversation. You know, Type in your questions, raise your digital hand, get into the Q&A and chat <clears throat> because we really wanna hear from you what your attention is on and uh, listen to your needs. Uh, the research is um, being created now for the next national survey that will go out um, mid-February from the Learning Council. It'll be open for everybody to respond to for quite a few months before we close it again. And believe me, every piece of data that we're looking at right now is shocking um, with regards to how much change. So we're going to get into that. Let me give you another couple of pointers here. Um, besides raising your hand, like I said, type into chat. Um, both myself and Doug Cawthon are moderating today, so uh, you can also just point anything you want at us if you want to have us ask the question. Our sponsors for today and tomorrow are ClassLink, Achieve 3000, Scholastic Digital Solutions, Lightspeed, Codesters, Identity Automation, and No Story. We're very excited to have all of them support us so we can keep doing this. Even though we really wanted to physically be together again, we, we miss all of you and um, being able to be live in the market. Maybe that'll come back by end of year. We're not really sure yet. Okay, so this is our lineup for the day. Uh, we have Dr. Hugo Moreno with us already from Willard uh, F. Payne Elementary School. So we're gonna kick off this first half hour um, talking to Hugo about what's happening with him. So uh, Dr. Moreno, do you have slides to share? Cause I'm going to yeah, have, yes, you... I do. Yes, okay. I do. So do you see where it says share on your screen? So you could yes. share. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you share. And then as a default, I still have your image up. Okay, good. All right. Now I see your screen. So I'm going to put myself on mute unless you need me. 
Um, okay. cause this, this now next half hour is your show about what's happening with you guys. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank okay. you for that. Okay, okay. So welcome everybody. Thank you for being here with us today. I'm going to share a little bit about what's happening at our side of town. Uh, I'm at the city of El Monte, which is part of the San Gabriel Valley, which is part of Southern California. I know this is Northern California, but this is all California. And I think it all, all districts in California are facing similar uh, challenges or similar realities as I call it. So Thank you for being here with us. Uh, we do know that uh, distance learning is the new normal or the normal now because uh, we've, we've experienced this now for almost half a year. And uh, for those of you that are uh, keeping track, uh, last Friday was the 100th day of school. So uh, I use technology. I actually did customize uh, videos uh, using Zoom for my TK, K and first grade, acknowledging the students, the teachers, the parents, because uh, I couldn't be at the, all classrooms at the same time. So I did take advantage of tech. And as a matter of fact, I was in a two-hour administrative meeting. So that did help. But sharing with you, today is Groundhog Day. So today we find out if, uh, I, I guess the news already might have told us that if we're going to have uh, more winter or spring is coming along the way it should. But uh, Groundhog Day, if you ever saw the movie, you see it repeating all the same scenes until finally there's a positive outcome. I think that's what some of the reality that we face this year is like at the beginning when we entered this pandemic, uh, practically almost a year ago, uh, we were overwhelmed and uh, it was, you know, what you could do. By the time the fall came along, we understood that distance learning had to happen. And again, you know, it was that creating that infrastructure to make it happen both for parents and for students and your staff. So I think part of that was a great learning curve in regards to how proficient you were or where did you find yourself on that scale of proficiency uh, in regards to educating uh, our communities. And so one of those are, are some of the challenges that we face and we continue to face in some areas is the issue of connectivity and infrastructural challenges. Uh, there's still areas, as you know, that we call dead zones, uh, internet provider costs for some families who are trying to make ends meet like I was sharing earlier with Doug, that in our community here, for just a room, not even, you're saying an apartment with a bedroom and a living room and a kitchen, just a room, people are paying up to $1,200 a month. So we're having families literally moving out of the area because they can't afford it. Now, they can't afford a place to live. They're not going to have enough money to provide internet for their children. So that's when we have to step in and provide them with hotspots and address their dead zones. And again, the other challenge is also parents having limited knowledge of the platforms, even though we try to do a lot of outreach. Uh, and we also have to understand that parents are working. Some of our parents are working two or three jobs. Uh, you know, some of them are working on the underground economy. Some of them are working on the regular jobs. So and then again, they're trying to balance that whole issue of working, uh, supporting their children at home. Sometimes parents have split shifts. Some of them are working in the morning and then the evening. And, and by the time they get home to try and provide that support for the children, they're just not there. And then we have older children that are now looking at being a provider. So they're trying to balance their education. You know, you have middle school, high school students that are trying to attend class at the same time, ensuring that their younger siblings are looking at how to be engaged in the classroom with their teacher. How are they moving forward with that? Uh, and how to maintain that motivation for the children not to be tempted to kind of step out or put a black screen or not even be engaged. And so we are asking a lot from our communities, our, and, and that's everybody involved. We have, again, you know, some of the Zoom and other platform challenges. Like uh, at the beginning, you know, you had the limited capacity of how many people could be in, in, a, in a meeting or even in breakout rooms. Uh, sometimes it was up to 50 or 100 participants. And then you're trying to conduct a district-wide event. And then you're limited to 100 when you have over 1,000 people that are trying to attend. So again, the limitations with small breakout groups, uh, the new platforms, like in our district, we embrace Schoology. We used to have Clever, which we still have, but we're moving towards Schoology to be the all-encompassing platform that we're going to have both for parents and students and staff. So it's that cultural shift, you know, and that, that paradigm shift as well of that mindset that you need to now embrace technology in a different way because it's no longer just, okay, I can create a PowerPoint or a Google slide or a Google doc, but 
How am I going to go beyond that to be able to really reach the children? And I think that's, that's, these are the challenges that we're facing, not only in my district, but I think in every district in one way or another, maybe in certain areas, certain schools. I know that in the rural, uh, rural areas, they're facing some of these challenges as well with connectivity. And it's one of those where we definitely need to see what we can do to, to ensure that we are addressing them to the best of our ability. So as we, as we look at um, what I call support, oh, I'm sorry, I moved on too fast. Uh, let me get back to this one. Supports, and I apologize for the way it's showing right now, but uh, device and hotspot distribution. A lot of our districts have been doing the hotspot uh, distribution for the, um, what is it called? Um, sorry about that, got this. I don't know what this is doing here, and I apologize. That 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 goes to show you where my tech savvy uh, re reality is here. Um, but I again disregard the email that I have there. Um, the Bison Hotspot distribution. We are actually we have equipped buses to be able to uh, provide that hotspot support that we are um, that we're having available for our our community. So. Again, uh, let me go back to the screen share if I can. Yeah, and, Dr. Moreno, we could only see your PowerPoint. We never saw an email. Oh, I oh, you, I oh. You were, you, yeah, you were correctly sharing only PowerPoint. So I think okay, awesome. Good. Thank you. I apologize. See, there yeah. you go. That's my limitations on uh, technology. So there you go. Yeah. Okay, good. But you're going to need to reshare because now we're seeing a black screen. Okay. Uh, so go, go back to share. Okay, let me let me go back to share. Okay. And then in the little squares, look for the one that says PowerPoint. Okay. It's not a, you're not sharing a screen, you're sharing a specific application. Okay, so there we, let's see. Let's see if we can get this going. And I apologize for my, all my junk in here. I've been, I'm trying to multitask and I, yeah. I'm trying to do my best here. And again, I, I apologize for this uh, mishap in here. Let me get back to where I need to be so I can go ahead and do that as well. Um, yeah, so this is sometimes, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, this happens, I guess. Yeah, and so let me, it's, let to me... it's totally okay. It happens to everybody. It's, it's part of the fun of us being together. Yeah. Str yeah. Struggling together. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and thank you very much for your patience, because I do appreciate that. Um, yeah, so, come, yeah, I'm trying to get back there. But like what I was sharing earlier, as I'm trying to get back to the, um, to the PowerPoint is, the reality of, of where we find ourselves with our um, with hotspot distribution, with internet, with everything that we're trying to do to be able to 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 take on these challenges that that we're facing, you know. And um, let me see if I can. There it is. Um, let me see. Yep, yep, I see it. Okay, so okay. stay right there, and then just just go on the PowerPoint okay. and move this slide. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. So thank you for your support. So again, it's uh, we, have, we have buses equipped. We have 13 buses that are now going to be able to provide support for those dead zones. And we, believe it or not, we do have dead zones in every city and every place. Uh, we are also providing parent workshops. So one of the things that we understood is that we needed to do some kind of parent professional development or workshop to get them to understand the uh, student information systems that we're operating from now. I mean, before it was like they would come to the school side and you know, would, the, everything would be addressed in person, but we understand with COVID, the distance learning and the, you know, again, the six feet and so forth. So technology is our best friend. And so we've been doing parent workshops. And uh, again, we have interventions that are also through distance learning for our students that need that additional help. And of course, professional development for our staffs because they need to become acclimated. And we're talking about everyone from our teachers or certificated staff to our instructional assistants and any other support staff that we can get going. And so this is just a, a parent recruitment strategies that are shared from our district telling us, you know, get on a social media, uh, do a messenger or EdConnect depending on the platform. And our district is messenger. We used to have EdConnect and rule a lot of outreach because we need to get parents involved as much as possible. Some of the challenges, to be honest with you, is that some of these workshops are at three o'clock in the afternoon, at 2.30, at two. And as we know, and at, at least in this community that I serve, a lot of our parents are still working. We do get some parents. And uh, to be honest with you, we at our school site, the, the goal was to have uh, 
20 parents for an English workshop and 20 for a Spanish workshop. And we ended up in the mid thirties, but the uh, people registering to, you know, good intentions to make it. But the reality has been that we end up with about 10 parents between eight and 10 parents, e either in English or Spanish, which again is, you know, almost 50% of what we need. And they're great because they're actually teaching parents from the ground up. They're teaching them what a mouse is, what a cursor is, how to create a document, how to be able to access the internet uh, in different ways. A lot of our parents do have an, e an email and that's how they were able to get in and get the invitation. But beyond that, you know, some of the terminology, they don't know it, some of the limitations that they face. And so some of these are the challenges that our community faces. We, we It is a poor community, you know, what we call low SES. And again, you know, we have uh, families working multiple jobs just to provide ends meet. Having said that, though, this community is really uh, understands the power of education and technology and they try to do the best they can with our, with our students. So to share with you right hey, now. Hey, we, Dr. Moreno. Yes, ma'am. We have a question for you from Ann Cruz. Okay, go ahead. Can you share the question, please? Yeah, hold on. We're going to see if we can get her unmuted. Yeah, we, we sent her an ask her to unmute. Okay. I'll wait a couple seconds. If, sure. You know, if we don't hear her, then I'll ask it. Okay. Ann, are you there? Okay, not hearing from her. Okay, so she's asking, how are you getting parents to attend? Like, what are you doing with outreach? So, so again, is it email or what is it? So what we're doing, we have a community liaison. I know that some districts have community liaisons. Some of them have a community outreach person. And our, we're very lucky because in our district, every school has a community liaison. Now, like anything else, you have some community liaisons that, you know, are willing to go above and beyond other ones, you know, they'll just do what they're supposed to do. And so at my site, I have the, the, the community liaison that will do anything and everything she has to do. So for example, one of the things that she has done, she does personal phone calls. Not only does she do, uh, you know, the regular messenger, she'll make personal phone calls. She will text them, of course, social media through Facebook, our Facebook page, but she will mobilize in any in any and every way she can to make sure the parents have the resources that they need, to make sure the parents have the, uh, you know, the, the reminders that they need to be able to, to, to log in and join in. It's a lot of manpower, woman power, person power to be able to get that going. But it's part of that. It's, it's going above and beyond. It's not just to let me post it on Facebook and hopefully people get here or let me send an email. It's that, that personal touch of following up with a, a personal phone call. And trust me, I, years ago, and I'll just share this real quickly with you. I remember when I first got here at the school site uh, six years ago now, and I was really pushing for parent workshops to, to get parents, you know, involved and learn what we had to offer at the school, a different mindset, different, you know, uh, I'm very community oriented. So I, 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 I committed a sin. I, I, not that it was a sin, but I thought it was something good. So I, I failed. I have to do a personal phone call to parents, right? So now, the ladies, those of you that are married, right? If, uh, if the principal, well, first of all, when you, you, your husband receives a phone call at seven o'clock at night. And tells you, I need to talk to, you know, Leilani. And they're going to say, excuse me, who are you? So I had to, I had to share how, you know, good evening, I'm the principal and I'm calling to, can I speak with Leilani or uh, speak with, uh, you know, Maria? And I would like to invite her to our parent workshops. They're like, mm, are you real? I'm like, yes, I am real. This is my phone number. This is that. But it was doing that personal phone call. And they're like, and by the way, sir, if you want to come to our workshops, you're welcome to. And it's that personal touch that makes a huge difference. When you don't have that, you know, people, they won't give it a second look. Because a lot of times, you know, you get emails and you're like, oh, I'll get to it later. And, and you never do. Or sometimes you're like, oh, you see the text. Oh, it's coming from the school. I, and I don't want to look at it. But you get that phone call and you're like, oh, hi, how you doing? How's everything? You know, and, and you have that human connection that makes a big difference. So that's a lot of work. And, and, and our community liaison's name is Nelly. So Nelly goes above and beyond all the time to make sure that we get our parents connected, that we do what we can to support our community. So to answer answer your question, I hope that answered your question. That that's what we're doing, and and that is that extra step um, because the social media alone and 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 texts are not enough. So that personal phone call. Um, 
Uh, are there any other questions, please, you know, please let us know. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And and like many districts in, in California, you know, some are actually with uh, students already in person, depending on, on your county. I mean, uh, uh, LA County is still purple. So we're still looking at, of course, the numbers are coming down and the variables are getting where they need to be, but uh, we're going to be facing Super Bowl weekend. And you know what happens, people gather again. So there's going to potentially be another wave of surges, uh, even though the vaccinations are there. But coming back to the district, what we're doing is, of course, we have the distance learning that's going on right now. And as we speak, we're already kind of getting ourselves ready, uh, preparing for going hybrid. What that will look like, that's actually something we're working on. I'm part of uh, one of the committees that's looking at uh, providing learning acceleration because instead of learning loss, we're looking at it from a different lens. But at the same time, there's other committees that are working on what the hybrid program is going to look like. Is it going to be two days or three days on campus, depending on the group? Is it going to be AM, PM? And then eventually, of course, the, the ultimate goal is for everybody to come back. But like I was sharing earlier with Doug, it, it's, it's one of those where it cannot be what it was before. We really have to embrace technology. We really have to go that extra step. And, and, and parents are going to they're, they're gonna say, I want that uh, distance learning option. What are you going to provide for me? And how are you going to support me with that? So I think that those are the realities that we're facing right now in regards to, um, to where we're at throughout the state of California. And I think throughout the nation, really, because it's, it's again, and then some of the challenges are, you know, that um, certain associations are not ready for, for staff to come back. And so that's going to be a different conversation. That's uh, like they say in New York, above my pay grade. But definitely uh, as a site leader, we need to make sure that our site is ready to go. We have thermometers, uh, digital thermometers that can be stationary or mobile that can be utilized. We we got to make sure that we have the PPE. We got to make sure that we have all the infrastructure that we need and uh, to be able to provide it for staff and students. And, and again, have our protocols, again, reinforcing those uh, uh, every time we, you know, we have an opportunity to do so with staff and community, you know, as we look forward to that uh, new hybrid reality that's going to be coming down. And as you've heard the governor, if you're here in California, you've heard the governor a few weeks ago, he's really wanting us in a very subtle way. He's pushing for us to come back uh, sometime in March. And uh, our new president, President Biden, is looking at us coming back uh, within the first hundred days, which would make it sometime in April. So that's what we're facing right now. And I think that being prepared, offering what we can to make sure that this happens and embracing technology in that sense, because that's the other thing, you know, we have students that uh, unfortunately have accidents with tech and we got to make sure that we have enough devices and extra devices to be able to meet that need. So that that's, that's where we're at. I mean, that's where our district is currently in regards to how we're trying to, to move forward and those challenges that we have. And again, trying to provide all the supports that we can for our community. And it's, as you know, those of you that are, you know, in, in this forum with us, it's not easy. It, it's one of those that we really need to work uh, every single day to make sure that we're providing the best that we can for our communities that we serve. So um, are there any questions? Uh, anybody wants to share something or ask, ask away, um, you know, but that's where we're at right now. And of course, we want to, even for social emotional learning, we, we have to provide that support and we have to have those, in, those infrastructural uh, components to make sure that students have easy access to our, for our, for our counselors, which we do. They have, there's a, we have a upper grade form that they, the students can fill out, you know, maintain their confidentiality. We have a primary where the children, there's a way for them to do it, or if they want support from their teacher or, or the parent, we have that uh, allowed access for that. So again, it's one of those, we, we really need to look at the whole child and how do we provide that support? And also for our parents and community, we do offer uh, through distance uh, assembly, I want to call it, we do have parent workshops to deal with depression, to deal with the challenges of distance learning, you know, how to communicate uh, again, you know, how to, to look out for those resources that are out there. Uh, a lot of our parents are still, yes, they've gotten, they've grown in technology, but they don't know the ins and outs sometimes of, or what is required of them or how to maneuver through these systems to get to where they need to go. So that's where as human beings, we provide that support as best we can. And, you know, it's, it's, it is a challenge, but we're here 
uh, as a public institution to make sure that happens. So, and again, Dr. Dr. Moreno, I think yes. that there's a lot of conversation. Uh, this is Leilani again um, sure. about this whole onboarding of parents as proxies for the teaching activities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, given that you've said and quite a few superintendents have told us, you know, even they were manning the phones mm -hmm. for helplines. Yes. And still are, you know, finance people are manning the phones, human resources right. people. I mean, this has just been wild. Right. Um, but but really, how do you feel about the parents' willingness? I mean, what I mean, I feel like every parent in America just they either left, right? Because the statistics are showing a huge leaving, you know, there's been a big exit. Right. Um, and the and but the ones that are there, they it feels like they're pretty engaged. I mean, yeah. what are, what are your thoughts on that? You no, know, you're actually correct. There, there are there are for many reasons. You know, we we do know that we do have parents that are very committed, and and that, that tends to be much more so in our uh, primary grades, our TK through first or TK through second grade. And it's that mindset, Leilani, that still exists with a lot of parents, and and, and, and you know we're all parents, but it's like, and I and I'm referring to this. The younger the kids are, the more the parent is involved. And obviously, do, through distance learning, they have to be. But then when our kids get to those middle grades, and then definitely by junior high school, they're like, well, they should be able to maneuver on their own. They should be able to, uh, you know, be able to handle it. But the reality is all of our students need the support. Some of our students, some of our parents are our partners. That's the one thing that I acknowledge when I did the videos for the 100 day. I made it very clear that I thank the parents for their involvement and in making sure that we are working collaboratively to make sure the kids are getting the education they deserve and they and that we need to provide for them. Because as our partners, you know, we're looking at where our students are, what are their needs, how can we support those needs? And at the same time, unfortunately, we do have parents that due to work or other reasons are not able to provide that support. So that's where we have to be able to have those infrastructures in place. Uh, you know, if, if that means uh, having the counselor available or the principal available or having uh, interventions, depending if they're academic or for SEL, we need to make sure that we have that. We, we have a calming room that we have accessible for students and parents and community to be able to reach out if they're facing some challenges. Uh, you know, and again, it is, it is, it is a huge obstacle, if you look at it that way, where it's a huge challenge, or it's a huge opportunity, depending on your mindset of how do we deal with this? Well, the reality is, yes, some parents are working, they cannot be there. And, and the other ones are, yes, some parents are there, and they're doing the best that they can. And those parents that are working with us, we need to make sure that we are providing them with all the supports, and letting them know that we value them, not take them for granted. Uh, you know, a lot of times we're like, well, you know, they're with mom and dad, but I think that when you're acknowledged, uh, people feel good about themselves and they feel more committed. If we, uh, you know, and sometimes I'm going to be honest, we get busy. It's not that we don't want to do it. It's just like we're overwhelmed with everything that we're doing. And so it's like we forget to do that. It's just like right. they say, when you start every morning with a smile, you set, a, you set the tone for the day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have just two minutes left with you. Sure. So I want to make sure that I look at what you're showing us on the screen right now, your distance learning plan, because we did this big research project. We looked at tons of these. Yeah. You know, New York's doing AB weeks and AB days and can only go in one door, but not the other door for groups. Right. Mm -hmm. I feel like this mutation is deeper than we think. And, and so what you're looking at mm -hmm. is still built around whole group, right? Yeah, yeah. Right now, yes. The the what we're looking at is definitely having cohorts coming in, mm -hmm. um, and of course, doing the distance learning, the hybrid. We're looking at our district was looking at uh, having actually an academy, like a a school that would just provide this distance learning. So that's still discussed. I don't know if that will come to fruition, but they were looking at providing that available for the parents that choose that route because we do have to give them options. You know, it cannot be, and you're right, for some of the, some of the programs that we were looking at to provide initial uh, first phase of support was uh, to kind of have them come in one way, exit the other way, you know, coming in, at, uh, you know, in the morning, having had already breakfast at home and taking their lunch at grab and go with uh, their lunch and the breakfast for the next day. So there, there's still a lot of infrastructure that, 
you know, has to be in place, protocols, excuse me, to be able to make sure that we ensure the safety of everyone. Uh, but at the same time, yes, it, it is. It is uh, that, that's what I am hoping that we don't go back to that brick and mortar mentality. We cannot do that. Yeah. that, that that's not going to work. Yeah, I totally, I totally agree with you. And that's, that's really what the what a lot of our talk today is going to be about what logistics probably look like in the future. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to go all the way deep into it. But I'm going to be watching you because this is an interesting model that you're going to have to deal with, mm -hmm. probably without enough people or logistics help mechanization of this. Mm -hmm. This is going to be wild. This is going to put a lot of pressure on your teachers. Yeah. And so this, yeah, exactly. And that's why I said, this is what we actually provided the information at the beginning of the year. And then again, there is a committee looking at what you know, to fine tune it. But as I, you know, I, we fine tune it. I'll share that with you, Leilani. And, yeah. and uh, definitely, because, you know, one thing is to plan. And the other thing is the reality. That's why I said the challenges and the realities are very, very, you know, present, but definitely we'll share with you as we progress. Oh my goodness. Yes. I'd love that. But you know what, here's the validation back for you is you cared enough to keep going, right? You were like, people are going to learn. I don't care. It's going to happen. I'm going to make it happen. Right. Definitely. So, you know, most of American leadership in education did that. And, and we just have to remember the good thing. Yeah. Kids learn something, most of them anyway. And that's what matters. Right. Um, yeah. That's lovely. Lovely. Well, yeah. thank you so much. You don't have to leave. You can still stay, but I'm going to thank you again. And then okay. I'm going to call on Nicole. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate everyone. And if you need, you know, if you want to reach out, Leilani has my info. Thank you. Good. Thank you so much, Dr. Moreno. Wonderful.